Good day, this is Professor Will, CBMG PhD. And today is Monday, May 30th, 2022. It is 6.51 and 49 seconds, a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And today's research, menopause and cardiovascular health. So let's hop to it here. Hormonal changes during menopause are directly related to decline in cardiovascular health. Date May 15, 2022. Source, European Society of Cardiology. Levels of bad cholesterol rise during menopause, and 10% of this increase is likely due to the shifts in sex hormones. Women usually undergo menopause at the age of 48 to 52 years, leading to a decline in estrogen and increase in follicle-stimulating hormones. Menopause is thought to predispose women to heart disease since it typically develops 10 years later than in men at risk rises after menopause. The previous studies have shown that menopause is associated with heart disease, promoting levels of metabolites. But this study is a first to link the shift with changes in female sex hormones. The metabolite shifts were partially ameliorated with hormone replacement therapy. Menopause is unavoidable, but it is possible as a negative metabolite shift can be diminished by eating healthy and being physically active. In particular, women should pay attention to the quality of fat in their diet and getting sufficient exercise to maintain cardiorespiratory fitness. Hormone replacement therapy is an option that women should discuss with healthcare providers at this point in their lives. The analysis included 218 perimenopausal women not using hormone replacement therapy and baseline. Levels of 180 metabolites, lipids, lipoproteins, and amino acids, and two hormones, estradiol and follicle-stimulating hormone, were obtained from blood samples and baseline and every three to six months until early menopause. The menopausal state was assessed using menstrual diabetes and blood, follicle-stimulating hormone levels. Early post-menopause was defined as no periods for over six months and elevated follicle-stimulating hormone levels on at least two consecutive occasions. A total of 35 women, 15%, started Hormone replacement therapy. During this study, the study investigated whether the menopausal hormonal change modulates the metabolite profile measured in blood samples taken before and after menopause. Because the menopausal transition, important example, the time when variable hormone levels and irregular menses varies tremendously from person to person, the time points for assessment were individualized. The researchers carried out detailed statistical analysis to determine what changes occur in metabolite levels during the menopausal transition and whether these changes related to the shift in sex hormone levels. They also tested whether the metabolite trajectory varied between hormone replacement therapy users and non-users. The average change at baseline was 51.7 years, and the median follow-up was 14 months. Menopause was associated with a statistically significant change in levels of 85 metabolites. An exploratory analysis shown that the menopausal hormonal shift directly explained the change in 64 of the 85 metabolites with effect sizes ranging from 2.1% to 11.2%. And these included low-density lipoprotein, cholesterol, triglycerides, fatty acids, and amino acids. The analysis were adjusted for age and baseline, duration of follow-up, education level, smoking status, alcohol use, the physical activity, and diet and quality. A second exploratory analysis revealed that Hormone replacement therapy was associated 
with increases in high-density lipoprotein, good cholesterol, and reductions in low-density lipoprotein, bad cholesterol. Regarding hormonal replacement therapy, very strong conclusions cannot be drawn solely based on the observational study, since the number of women starting therapy was very small and the type of drug was not controlled. Nevertheless, the findings indicate that initiating hormone replacement therapy early into menopause, important example, during the menopausal transition, offers the greatest cardioprotective effect. Women considering hormone replacement therapy should discuss it with their healthcare profession since there are numerous choices and some potential contraindications such as cancer or stroke history that need to be considered. Good day, this is Professor Will, CBMD, PhD, on Microbiology, Bioinformatics, and Pathophysiology. This video was created for educational purposes only. Hope you enjoyed listening. Until next time, have a great day.